As you've seen in the previous videos, LeapFrog builds surfaces very quickly directly from the input data using a 3D modeling algorithm called the Fast Radial Basis Function. Seeing surfaces being built this way can sometimes lead one to feel that they don't have very much control on how the surfaces look. However, LeapFrog has many tools available for modifying these initial surfaces when necessary. In this video, we will discuss these surface editing tools and the order in which you should use them. For surfaces that require manipulation from several editing tools, editing is typically most efficient if applied in a strategic order as listed here. However, depending on the surface, only some options may be applicable or necessary. After a quick overview of each of the different editing options, this video will primarily focus on adding additional data, vein editing, and editing with polylines using the project from the previous videos. In the Building the First Pass Model video, we discussed two fundamental editing options available in LeapFrog, snapping surfaces to input data and surface resolution. Always keep in mind that if your surfaces are not appropriately honoring your input data, the first and easiest adjustment you should make to that surface is to reduce the resolution from the default to a more reasonable value. Resolution can be revisited at any time and modified to suit your purposes. Amongst the most powerful and useful surface editing tools in LeapFrog are the global and structural trends. These tools allow you to control and refine the orientation and continuity of surfaces and volumes in LeapFrog. While trends typically have more influence on intrusion style surfaces, they can also be very helpful for orienting deposit and erosion style surfaces that are built from minimal input data. They can help guide the surface in the intended direction. Just like all the editing tools we've seen so far, an appropriate trend should be applied before you resort to manually editing with points or polylines. The next editing options automatic intrusion category compositing, volume points, point generation, and value clipping all pertain specifically to intrusion style surfaces, but when applicable can be very powerful editing tools. These concepts are quite specific and advanced and therefore won't be explored in this video, but in the event your project requires advanced editing of intrusion style surfaces, there are several resources available in the help on the LeapFrog blog and from your local LeapFrog team. The boundary filter is a vital editing option when dealing with unfaulted units within a faulted model as it allows you to prevent fault offset from occurring in units that it shouldn't, like topsoil or late intrusions. The boundary filter option can also be used in unfaulted models to allow any data outside the boundary of the model to inform that model when necessary. Like the intrusion editing options, the boundary filter option isn't covered in detail in this video, however more resources about these options can be found in the LeapFrog help, on the blog, or from your local LeapFrog team. Using the project from the previous video, I will demonstrate adding additional data to a couple of surfaces, editing the clay lens vein surface, and editing with polylines. I'll start by editing the water surface. Prior to starting the edits, I will make a copy of the model for comparison purposes. Right now, the water surface has only been defined by the boreholes. However, we also have bathymetry point data and a shoreline GIS line available to refine the surface. To add additional data to a surface, right-click the surface and select Add. In this case, I'll start by selecting points and add the bathymetry data. By clicking this black triangle, I can see that the points have now been added to inform the surface. If you add the wrong data or simply change your mind, you can remove the added data from the surface by right-clicking it in the project tree and selecting Remove. The surface will then be restored to its original state. Next, I'll add the shoreline GIS data. I'll select the Shoreline On Topography option as I know it will be at the correct elevation. We are now honoring all of the available data that we have for the water contact. However, we can still see significant flooding of the water volume onto the land areas of the model. 
If we view the topography in the scene along with the water surface, we can see a volume between the top of the water surface and the topography, which gets filled with water volume when the volumes are created in the model. If, however, we pull the water surface up above the topography surface, this water volume will no longer be created. In this particular case, the only editing option that will make sense is to create a polyline edit. To create an on-the-fly edit of the surface, right-click the surface and select Edit. I'll edit with the Polyline tool. For a more detailed description of drawing in LeapFrog, please see the Polylines section of the Help. I'll start editing by drawing a slice or plane where I can make the edit. Next, I'll choose to draw the line on the slicer. Alternatively, you can draw lines snapped to objects in the scene. You have the choice of either drawing lines, curved or straight, or points. The lines option is very versatile, with curved lines, tangent options, and polarity that give you considerable control over a resulting surface. While polylines can be quite powerful for editing surfaces, they can also be challenging to master, and their full functionality isn't required in many cases. In some cases, such as this one, where ultimate control over the shape of the surface is unnecessary, it's simpler to use the points option, as they have no associated polarity or tangent to worry about. To place a point, simply select the Draw Points button and then click in the scene. You can place a point with orientation data by clicking and dragging the mouse while placing the point. If you create a point with a structural disk, as I have just done, you will have to pay attention to the polarity of the disk. Point and line polarity, while very useful, can cause problems if you're not paying attention to it. Since the water surface is blue on top and white on the bottom, I must ensure that the point has the same orientation or the resulting surface will be flipped around the point, causing it to contort in an unrealistic fashion. You can control the properties of the polylines or points by selecting the corresponding object in the shapes list and adjusting the parameters in the properties panel. Click save to apply the edits to your surface. We can see the water surface no longer exists above the topography at this location. And when we look at the corresponding water volume, it now ends at the shore as expected. We can repeat this process on a few slicer planes at the south end of the model as well. When you're making edits, Make sure you're always viewing the surface and not the volume to avoid confusion. If you draw an oriented point, ensure the polarity is correct. You can flip the polarity of a disk using this button in the Polyline toolbar. You can also remove the disk if you want by using this button. I'll click Save to apply the edit and remove the slicing plane to see the results. I will need to repeat this process in a couple more places to fully remove the water volume from the land. While polylines can be a powerful tool for editing your surfaces, they should be used as sparingly and strategically as possible and only as a last resort. Adding too many polyline edits can increase the likelihood of creating conflicting information in the model, which can lead to errors in the surfaces. Prior to editing with polylines, we recommend trying the applicable implicit editing options mentioned in this video such as changing the resolution, adding trends, changing the category compositing, or value clipping parameters, etc. to achieve the modifications that you require. The aforementioned implicit editing options will be more seamlessly compatible than polylines will be when new data is added to the project. Any polyline edits that you have made will remain unchanged when new data is added. So it will be very important to ensure that the existing polylines are still compatible with new data when you add it to the project. If new data contradicts your polyline edits, you will likely end up with some telling complexities or errors in your affected surfaces. Now that the water volume is behaving as expected, I'll take a look at editing the clay lens. Surfaces being built using the vein tool automatically extend to the model boundaries, However, in many cases, this is not appropriate. There are a couple of options available to edit this surface such that it honors the data and looks more like what we expect. 
The first thing I'll do is pinch out the surface around the bore holes that don't contain any clay unit. To do this, double click the vein surface in the project tree, click on the surfacing tab, tick the pinch out box and click OK. The clay surface will no longer extend through bore holes that don't contain the clay unit. If you would like to further control the extents of a vein surface, you can do so by editing its boundary object. To do this, expand out the vein object in the project tree to see its components. Right-click the boundary object and select Edit. A plane, roughly the orientation of the surface, will appear in the scene along with the polyline toolbar. I can now simply digitize the boundary I wish to have. This is frequently easier to do if you make the vein surface and the plane surface slightly transparent so that you can see where you're digitizing. Digitize the boundary and then ensure to close the polyline at the end. This is indicated by a little circle symbol. Save the boundary to apply the edits. For more information about vein editing options, please see the LeapFrog help. Lastly, I'll take a look at the granodiorite surface. This surface doesn't actually contain any borehole contact points at all. It's simply a surface separating where the granodiorite is logged and where it isn't. I do have a mapped granodiorite contact though, so I can add it to the surface. To do so, I'll right-click the surface and select Add GIS Vector Data. I'll select the object on Topography. The surface is quickly updated to reflect the new data. Every different model in every different project will have different editing requirements. The editing options reviewed throughout this video will go a long way towards helping you to produce surfaces that match your geological data and your interpretation. For more information about the methods discussed or demonstrated in this video, please see the LeapFrog Help, blog, or contact your local LeapFrog office.